is how a bird that has been infected by foul pox looks like. You wouldn't want your poultry to be affected by the foul pox um, disease, which makes it very essential that you carry out the foul pox vaccination. Now, this is the sixth week of our brooding, because as you can see, the birds are all grown now. We've at least gotten over those critical brooding stages. And so we call it the post-brooding experience now. And as usual, we'll be having Dr. Lukman, who is going to be putting us through on the importance of having this foul pox vaccination and its, you know, implication the implication of not having it and the importance of having it. So stay tuned as we bring you step-by-step -step procedure of how to go about the foul pox vaccination. Today, we <clears throat> just have, we just got to our sixth week today and the vaccine we'll be administering today is a foul pox vaccine. Now, foul pox vaccine is a vaccine we administered week six and foul pox being a viral disease is a disease of high economic challenge to the farmer as well. Now, you realize from the series of our first series of our vaccination discussions, I've always tell, told you about how uh, economically important these diseases are. These are diseases where, when they occur and the birds actually come down with disease, they cause serious losses to the farmer. That's why we can them as being of economic importance to the farmer. Now, this foul pox is a viral disease, and then the essence of why we vaccinate them is so that they can produce antibodies against the virus, so that when the virus comes, they already have antibodies to fight against this. Foul pox comes in two forms. It comes either in the wet form or the dry form, but classically, most of the ones you see is going to be the dry forms, where it comes with pox lesions, just like we have in chicken pox in human beings. You see those pox lesions coming out on where you don't have feathers on their body talking about the combs, their wattles, as well as some parts of their, their feet too. Those, those are the places where you see the, uh, the pox lesion in the dry form. Why in the wet form you see it in their mouths and then it goes down to their throat as well as some part of their digestive tract. Now the part of the reason why, why this disease is of economic importance to the farmer is number one, it's a viral disease that does not have treatment. Once if your beds come down with pox, the only thing you can do is to manage them. That's one. Secondly, if you are dealing with a pox where it has appeared all over the face, even the aesthetic look of the bed is lost. That's one. Secondly, it will begin to affect things like their vision because it comes around the cones and the wattles that comes almost around the eyes. And then once it begins to close the eyes, vision becomes impaired and the bed will not be able to feed. And you know the effect of the bed is not being able to feed. Then another issue is that apart from it, the pox lesion coming around the eyes, it also comes somewhere around the nostrils too, which will also impair their uh, air exchange, talking about inhalation and exhalation of air. Then if you are dealing with the wet from which will likely appear within their oral cavity, that's within the mouth, as well as their throat and down, it affects feeding as well. So once you have a disease that is affecting the vision or air exchange of your birds, as well as their feeding, you know, is of economic importance, definitely those birds will not grow. And once they don't grow, you'll be already at the losing side as a farmer, and that is what we are trying to avoid. So today that's what we are going to be administering, a foul pox vaccine. As usual, we use our transport medium. And then looking into this, we realize that it still comes in an ice pack. Two for seven, whenever we are uh, transporting vaccines, we always transport in an ice pack. And this is the vaccine we are going to be administering. Now I'm going to be coming out with three different components from this vaccine pack. Now this is component one, which is the actual vaccine itself. This is the vaccine itself. This is component one. This is, vaccine. This is component two, which is a diluent. This is what we use in diluting our vaccine before administering it. This is the diluent, and then this is component three. Component three is our vaccine applicator, or what we call the jabber. Now once you dilute the vaccine, you dilute, you mix, and then this becomes it carrier for the vaccine and this is the jab at which you use this this goes into your already diluted vaccine and then you use this to inoculate the beds now this particular vaccine the root of administration is intradermal which means between the skin and then this is going to be going through our wing web once you start the vaccination you're going to see that in our video of the vaccination but basically the three components of the vaccine uh, the vaccine is the vaccine itself the, the, the diluent as well as your applicator or jabba this is the applicator and this is the container where you decant your vaccine to for application. 
these are vaccine and these are diamonds so we are diluting before we start applying as well we'll be doing now so here's what i'm going to do a portion of my diluent goes into the vaccine i dilute and then they come back into this before going so once i'm ready to apply that's when it goes into the decanter here and then i use the jabber to apply to the base So as you can see, a portion of my diluent goes into the vaccine. And then I have to cover this back. All you just need to do, you don't need to shake it rigorously. All you just need to do is tilt it up, down, up, down, up, down. You can see our vaccine is mixed, fully mixed. You don't need to shake it vigorously, just tilt it up, down, up, down, up, down, and then the vaccine is fully mixed up. And then this goes back. You can see that we still have some quantity of the diluent left here. Because all of this contents can now go into this bottle. So take a portion of this, goes into this, dissolve, dilute, and then return back into the diluent bottle. This goes back here. Just for even mixture, you can do this one more time. And then we're good to go. So we have our vaccine fully diluted here for 1000 dollars of it. So we need to let this come down back to room temperature by leaving it out. Since we've mixed with the diluent, that means our vaccine is ready to go into the assistant. So we'll bring it out and allow it to come down back to room temperature before we begin to apply. Now, as far as the application goes, the content of what we have here, some portion comes into this, we decant into this, and then this is our jabber that we use in applying.